Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we will talk about um, graphs of uh, different functions related to cosine. Um, well, the function is the same, but different combination of uh, changes in the arguments and, and the function, etc. Um, this is a continuation of uh, lectures about graphs of trigonomic uh, functions. I have already covered sine, so today is cosine, and then will be the other ones. So before we go into graphs, let's just recall certain basic properties of the cosine function. OK, number one is even function, which means cosine of minus x equals to cosine of x. Secondly, it's periodical function, 2 pi is a period. What's next? Where is it equal to 0? Well, remember, the main graph of the cosine goes like this. This is 0. This is uh, p over 2. This is pi. This is uh, 3 pi over 2. And this is 2 pi. The period is 2 pi. And the function is equal to 0 at pi over 2 plus pi k. Pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is an any integer number. Uh, the function gets maximum at uh, points 0 and 2 pi and uh, both directions, so it's basically 2 pi n. And the minimum is equal to minus 1 when x is equal to pi plus 2 pi n, where n is any integer. So basically, that's, that's the properties um, of this particular function. Now, using these properties, we will try to, to draw certain graphs, um, which I was playing. I think I have eight of them or something like this. OK. Function number one is cosine of minus x. OK. Graph of this function. Well, you remember that cosine is an even function. So basically, cosine of x and cosine of minus x are exactly the same value, which means that the graph should remain the same. On the other hand, you know that if point AB belongs to graph of the function y is equal to cosine of x, which means b is equal to cosine of a, then minus AB belongs to the graphic cosine of minus x. So together with AB, we have a, a minus AB. So the graph of this function should be symmetrical relative to the vertical y-axis to the graph of the base function, y is equal to cosine x. But again, um, our our um, uh, function, cosine of x, is even, which means it's already symmetrical. So basically, if this is the graph of the function cosine, that would be exactly the same graph of the function cosine of minus x. Because together with any point AB, we have a point minus AB, which already belongs to this graph. So graph of this function, not only symmetrical 
to the graph of the base function relative to the y-axis, it's exactly the same because this graph is already symmetrical. Okay, next. Cosine of 3x. Okay, um, based on the functions um, which uh, I was already explaining, like sine for instance, and based on the general graphs um, of, of the functions, you know that if you multiply an argument by some factor, it basically squeezes the graph towards, horizontally towards zero uh, point by, in this case, the factor of three. Why? For obvious reasons. Again, if you have a function f of x and point a, b belongs to this graph, which means b is equal to f of a, then for the function y is equal to f of 3x, obviously one third a and b point belongs to this graph. And what's the difference between these points, a, b, and one third b? Well, because abscissa is actually three times smaller. So for every point like this, there is a point which is three times closer to the y-axis, um, horizontally squeezed, which belongs to this graph. So in theory, we should expect this particular graph to look exactly like it was before because it's symmetrical, right? However, it's squeezed by, 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 by three times. So this was, what, uh, p over 2 in the original graph. So now it would be p over 6. And this would be minus p over 6. Then this function, uh, this value, used to be, um, what, um, uh, pi over 2, right? No, it was, it was pi. It was pi. So now it's pi over 3. And this is corresponding with minus pi over 3. So basically the whole period, this is 2 pi over 3. And this is minus 2 pi over 3. So the whole period is squeezed from 2 pi to 2 pi over 3. So the graph looks the same, but it's uh, more frequently oscillating around the x-axis. Now, reverse. Instead of 3, I will put one third. Now, what's the difference? Basically, there is no difference. Instead of squeezing by three times, we have stretching by three times. So, again, if my original graph, now let me use just um, two colors. My original graph from zero to two pi looked like this. Now, everything will be stretched by three times. Now, I just used one period. So now, it would be the same, basically, but this would be 6 pi, this would be uh, 9 pi over 2, this one would be 3 pi, and this one would be 3 pi over 2, and the graph would look the same. but it's scaled different. I mean, on the same scale, it would look like something like this. So where is the zero? Three pi over two. It would be nine pi, pi over two, it's somewhere here. So on the same scale, it would look like this. Much more, uh, much more, much, much rarer 
oscillating around the x-axis. Okay, next. Next, three fx. Three cosine of x. Well, now we are multiplying the value of the function, not the value of the argument, which means stretching or squeezing is along the y-axis. So whenever I'm multiplying my value of the function by 3, well, it's just 3 times higher or 3 times lower, depending on the sign. But the function, again, would look exactly the same. So if my original function looked like this, and this is 2 pi, this is pi, this is pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2. Then the new function, when we use the same scale in this case, would look like 3 times higher, which means instead of 1, it would be 3. Instead of minus 1, it would be minus 3. So what's the graph? It goes through 0, 0 remains zero, but one becomes three and minus one becomes minus three, so the graph would look like this. And the repetition based on the period. Periodicity is exactly the same, two pi. Okay, next. y is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus x. OK. Before graphing this particular function, let me do a little manipulation. Now, obviously, since cosine is an even function, I can change the sign of the argument without changing the value of the function. Now. We know, again, from the general theory of graphs for the functions, if I add or subtract something from the argument, it shifts the graph left or right depending on the sign. So in this particular case, for instance, if I, uh, if I have a point AB, which belongs to the function cosine of x, then A plus P over 2, B. belongs to cosine of x minus pi over 2, right? So if instead of x, you substitute a plus p over 2, minus p over 2, it would be a. And cosine of a is b, as we know. So this particular point belongs, which means that the point which is pi over 2 to the right from this point belongs to the new graph. So now we basically have a shift so if we used to have something like this, and this is 2 pi, and this is pi, this is pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2. Now, yes, and obviously this goes minus p over 2. Now everything together with the point a, b, I have a point a plus pi over 2b, which belongs to the graph. For every point here, I have a point here. So the whole graph actually is moving that way. So this point, when it's 0, it's at p over 2 in the old graph. In the new one, it would be, it would be pi, right? So at pi over 2, it would be 1. And then it goes down to pi. And then it's minus 1 here and 0 here, and continuation. So that's the graph of y is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus x. Now, if you remember the previous lecture about sine, this red one is exactly the graph of the sine, if you remember. So basically, 
you can feel that maybe, just maybe, cosine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to sine of x. Well, it is indeed true, and I will talk about this in a separate, in a separate lecture, the relationship between different functions, trigonometric functions. Right now, let's just have it as a, as a hunch. Yes, it is true, but let's not get into, a, a, any deeper into this. But basically, this red line is the graph of this function, and that's what I wanted to show. What's next? More complicated. y is equal to minus one third cosine minus three x minus three pi over two. Well, again, I will first convert it into something simpler, which is what? Minus one third cosine. First of all, I can change the sign under the cosine without changing the value. So it would be three x plus 3 pi over 2. Now it would be even better if I will factor out 3. And I will have 3 times x plus pi over 2. Okay. That I can actually draw. So my plan is the following. First, I will start with a cosine of x. That's obvious. Then, the next one would be cosine of x plus p over 2. <clears throat> That's easy. That's almost the same as the previous problem, but shift would be to the left. Because this is positive, so the shift would be to the left. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I will multiply my argument by 3, which means it will be squeezed 3 times by factor of 3 to the horizontally squeezed towards 0. And finally, multiply by minus one third. It means my, um, in this case, squeezing would be again also three times, but also reverse the sign of the graph, which means it will be symmetrically reflected over the x-axis. All right. So this is the plan. Number one. Okay, I'll skip the cosine of x. You know how it looks. And let me immediately switch to cosine of x plus p over 2. Um, so the graph would be shifted. So instead of this, it would be this. So this is minus p over 2. This is 0. This is uh, pi over 2, this is pi, and this is 3 pi over 2. So I shifted the graph from 0 to 2 pi to the left by pi over 2, and from minus pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. It's also the length of 2 pi, so the period is, is, is preserved, obviously. And then it repeats itself, obviously. Okay, that's the first one. And let me mark it. This is y is equal to cosine of pi over uh, x plus pi over 2. Okay. Next, we will multiply it by, uh, multiply the argument by 3, which means we should squeeze it down 3 times. So it was 3 pi over 2. Now this point will basically shift to the pi over 2. This pi would be to pi divided by 3. So let me take another color. So this is something like pi over 3, right? So the graph would reach its minimum at pi over 3. It will go here. Then um, 0, it would be at pi Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is pi over 6. This is pi over 6. And this is pi over 3. That's where it will be 0. 
this point will shift here. Then at p over 2, it would be 1. So this is this part, and this part would be minus pi over 6 goes this. So again, it's periodical, but the period now, instead of 2 pi, it's um, 2 pi over 3. That's how it's supposed to be, right? From minus p, pi over 6, so it would be pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is equal to uh, uh, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. Exactly. So it's 3 times less than 2 pi. So from minus pi over 6 to pi over 3 is exactly 2 pi over 3 lengths. So that's the new period after which it repeats itself. And finally, I have to multiply it by minus one third, which means it will be shorter three times, so it's not up to the one or minus one. It would be up to the uh, one third and minus one third, but we have to change the sign. So this is minus one third, this is one third. So changing the sign would be corresponding with from this down one third and change the sign so it starts from here. Then it goes this way. This one third of this, again changing the sign here and here. So that's the period. And then it repeats itself, obviously. So that's the graph from minus pi over 6 to pi over uh, to, uh, to 2 pi over to pi over 3. And um, well, actually, I, I prolonged it even further than pi over 3. Um, and uh, so this is the period is 2 pi over 2 pi over 3, and the amplitude minimum maximum from minus one third to one third. Okay, that's it. Next. S cosine of 2x plus cosine of minus x. Minus x, not x, minus x which is the same actually since cosine is an even function. Now here we just have to add two graphs together. So let's add them together. The first one is 2x, which means it's squeezed by a factor of 2 from the original. So instead of 0 to 2 pi, uh, it would be from 0 to pi. Now, this function is the same as cosine of x, as I was saying, so that has an original period of 2 pi. So this is 1 minus 1. It goes like that. Now, this is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. That's my cosine of minus x. And cosine of x is squeezed uh, by a factor of 2. So uh, this would be pi over 4. Uh, pi would be into pi over. So the minus 1 would be here. So the function would go here like this, then um, 1 should be here, which means it should be here. So, and the period would be pi, obviously. But since I have to really uh, draw it on the whole period, and the whole period is still 2 pi, so let me prolong to the second period in this case. And the second period would be 3 pi over 4, 
zero would be, yeah. How is it going? This is pi, okay. Now, point zero would be in 3 pi over 4, so it would be something like this. And at 2 pi, it's equal to one more, one more loop. Like this. So that line is cosine of 2x. And solid line is cosine of minus x. Now, let's add them together. At point 0, 1 and 1 would be obviously 2. So we have this point. Now, at point pi over 4, this one is equal to 0, so I will have exactly the same as here. So the graph would go this way. At pi over 2, this one is equal to 0, and this one is equal to minus 1. So the graph goes this way. Then it continues to go down. Um, well, actually, it's yeah, it would be double here, and it will eventually shoot to zero because this is minus uh, plus one and this is minus one, so it will reach zero at pi. And then, and then it would reach minus, so it will be something like like that. And then both of them go up, 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 up to 2, something like this. I believe that would be more or less close picture of what happens. So it's kind of a double wave, but these waves are bigger and these waves are smaller. That's when you are combining oscillation with different frequencies you will have a complicated picture of, um, of your mechanical device or whatever electronic device, uh, which will oscillate with different amplitude in a different, a different period of time. And uh, I, I showed this particular mechanical model of, uh, of a pendulum. If you have one pendulum, and then at the end of it, there is another pendulum of a different length. Since it's different lengths, this is 2 and this is 1, let's say. It more or less corresponds to this picture. So if this is where there are joints, then the final point would make a very, um, very interesting kind of um, oscillations which, remain, which resemble this particular line. So that's what happens when you are adding uh, things uh, with different uh, frequencies, with different periods. Okay, and the last function I have when I'm adding frequencies which are of the same period but are shifted one relative to another. Cosine of x plus cosine of x plus p over 2. So let's examine this. The last, the last graph. <laughs> um, again, this is cosine. This is 2 pi. This is pi. Minus 1, 0, 1, y, x. That's this one. Now, this one is different by shifting to the left. So let's shift it to the left by pi over 2. Now, this is pi over 2. This is minus pi over 2. So 
So it would look like this. This is true pi of two. Okay, and let's bring them to the same period. Well, periodicity is the same, 2 pi. So all I have to do is to analyze the graphs on, on one particular period, let's say from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so what will that be? Well, immediately we can see that in this case, I will have point Two. No, I'm sorry. This will still be one because I'm adding one and zero, so it's still one. Now here, it's still minus one. Now in between, one is positive and going down, another is negative and, and going up. So basically, the function will behave like this. Now here, it's also um, addition. But now we are adding two negative things. So it would be a little bit down. And then at this particular point, it should be minus 1, right? So it goes something like this. Then at this point, it would be at 3 pi over 2, it would be 1, because we are adding 1 and nothing. So it would be something like this. And then we will increase it just a little bit, and then go to 1 at this point. So this is how the graph would look. So from 1, it goes down to minus 1, then a little bit more down. So the minimum will be uh, less than minus 1. And then the maximum would be a little bit greater than 1. And then it goes back to 1. And then we repeat the same thing. So that's what happens when you are adding two oscillations with shifted, um, with shifted uh, argument. Well, um, that's it. Um, I hope you will review these graphs again. Um, what's interesting about sine and cosine, basically, basically, these trigonometric functions, they describe oscillations. It's a very physical process. So all these trigonometric properties, they have not uh, uh, just appeared in thin air in abstract mass. They are all having a very practical um, uh, application in, in real physics, mechanics, uh, in real practical life. So it's quite interesting, actually, that purely mathematical theory actually gets such a huge application in, in engineering, in, in electronics, etc. Um, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.